All right, <laughs> a little peek right there, I guess. Um, so anyway, I, I, I found myself a little bit of free time and I thought I might once again share. Um, and this time I'm actually gonna go and do something I've actually been putting off for a while. <laughs> Um, and it became apparent uh, a couple of videos back uh, was when I was doing uh, adding the extra uh, fonts that I, I realized it was it was probably about time um, to uh, to start consolidating uh, memory uh, because I'm almost out of uh, of 8k blocks to to use for anything. In fact, I've only got one left um, that isn't being used for something. That doesn't doesn't mean that I'm I'm using um, the you know, all, all the other 63 MMU blocks effectively because I'm not. In fact, that's one of the things that I'm going to be tackling today. Um, now, the, the 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 first part that I'm going to be doing is actually um, actually involves a, a decent amount of code and some and some, uh, some broad uh, well changes across a lot of different uh, different files because every instance of the uh, um, uh, states is going to have to be updated because they they actually access the data that we are going to be munging up today and hopefully <laughs> hopefully we won't have any like missed return statements because that was just like a little embarrassing to just totally miss that and then and then on top of that to, to blame um vcc i mean that that's just a dick move right it's always my shit that blows up never never question that, that I, I should know better i've been doing this long enough i should i should know better and yeah i keep on looking at it because i'm not really sure what to look at with the way that i've got this set up now in fact actually i can take care of that i can just make this a little small give me a little red dot up at the top and boing like a freaking coffee maker so uh so yeah i, I i'm using um all but uh one 8k block uh for stuff now certainly there's um uh, a lot that um, you know, I've, I've I've got you know vertically scrolling screens, so you know that the, the uh, you know obviously I've got to have two at least two screens for that, and then a little bit of buffering for um, you know overflow, so I don't have to actually do any clipping. Um, certainly makes things a lot you know a lot easier. And then I've got uh, you know compiled sprites and stuff. So in fact, let me see here, and actually let me move this over to live stream there we go all right so i'm not posting this one to facebook i'm pretty sure there's enough people <laughs> annoyed at it already um but uh so where was i right here okay um so here's actually the memory map and, and you can see and this is actually quite big I, i've got um you know these screens here now there's uh i, I mean i use three screens i use a back buffer i don't um, copy what's underneath of a sprite before I draw it. Um, anytime I need to restore, I just copy from this third screen onto either screen one or screen two in order to erase what was, you know, that's, you know, so it restores what was there before that sprite was drawn. Um, it helps in, in um, rendering performance. Um, it does have, uh, you know, some considerations, a couple of, of uh, different drawbacks, but there are um, certainly ways to to a, a address that so but this is one area that i might be touching on at some point but you know as you can see i've also got you know like the the, the number of users I mean, i've got 15 sprite banks I've got you know three uh three blocks sitting there for uh, for fonts um and then i've got these six textures down here and then of course the the application data which i'm, I'm not even bothering with at the moment but you know um and if you look at the numbers you know the bytes used, these are actually pretty recent i've got a tool that actually just dumps all this information out for me um so it makes it really easy to track but you know you know some things have uh you know a, a fair amount of, of uh free space and then so there's some consolidation that can happen um can't really do much a lot you know a whole lot with the fonts um, those are actually pretty full. I mean, I may be able to stuff something in there, but, uh, um, you know, so, and, and actually, you know, in consoling, this is going to be important because the, the closer I get to, um, uh, integrating sound, particularly a digital sound, um, the more I'm going to need that space to load in some waveforms. I mean, I, I, I you know, you've only got 512k to, to, to work with, at least on a stock machine. In, and I don't know if there's, a uh, enough, uh, people with two meg machines, um, to, uh, to, to, to warrant you know like going that far but especially when some consolidation can be done i mean the, i've got yeah this in fact this lat the screen the last 8k page that it uses it's only 128 bytes <laughs> that's it so i've got a ton there to to, to stash something in you know the sprite table is only two and a half k um restore functions i can't really do much to to consolidate those but i can actually drop other stuff you know in there and um so but uh, what i'm going to be actually looking at today is the uh the, the textures down here 
Um, so I mean, you know, I've got one that that plain you know looking page that compresses down to like 261 bytes. I mean, that's that's incredible. Um, but all of these, you know, three they're using up what 48k, but they'll fit in 24. Um, they just need to be uh, uh, arranged a little bit better. The different thing is, is that these are actually loaded with the package loader, um, which uh, will, will load in a you know uh, an asset file. It's really simple and and it allows you to to uh, um, uh, load your stuff off of the table so it's pretty incredibly flexible and, and all of that so we're going to be making some changes here to uh, to consolidate these and kind of squish that down and get three of those blocks back that'll give us 32k that's that's a good start going <laughs> going uh, going forward so you know we should be able to to get uh, you know at least a couple out of the uh, out of the sprite bank and and um, and and these numbers are actually a little bit misleading because there are sprites in here that are going to be going away completely um, so there are some here that I generate um, sprites for the even and odd pixel boundaries that way you get a bit smoother um, uh, uh, animation you know, as, as they're moving across screen particularly at this, this frame rate um, but all the paths that they're following are uh, byte aligned the, the, there are uh, lines of the even um, pixels so uh, there's uh, uh, that odd version is, is never actually used and there's quite a few of them that uh, that are there and those those can be sizable now there's a lot of them that I've actually gone in and and set it up so that uh, only the the, uh, the even uh, uh, pixel version is, is is built. So there's there's some uh, uh, some savings there, and that's going to be at least a you know 16k, probably around 24. So that's 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 going to be a pretty good start. And then this uh, this screen um, up here that uh, that might go away. That uh, it's going to depend on how attached I am to having a complex background. Um, see, because uh, uh, right now it's just got a, a, a background image that you know it just cycles through and then it's, it's constantly repeating and just you know goes gets the end, goes back to the beginning, and starts over again. It's it's always repeating. Um, so and that kind of gets boring after a little while. But at the same time, um, it's actually pretty performant. But uh, now me me personally, I want to go to a a, a tile map based background. Um, and since I'm only scrolling a, a, a pixel per frame, I I, I think I I can. Uh, I'll be able to work, you know, the, the, the extra uh, CPU usage in there. Um, but again, that takes memory. So, and, and that is, is going to take a, a decent amount of memory in order to get working quick enough to, to keep the, the type of performance that I need for the, the levels that I've, I've been working on. Um, now, on the other side of that, um, I could actually completely get, get rid of um, that screen and go to just a black uh, background. Um, and instead of copying from um, you know that back buffer or saving what's underneath of it since it's, it's just you know an empty background um, I just erased that that particular area so I, I get that memory back and um, I get it at a very noticeable uh, uh, increase in performance it, it, it's actually pretty pretty significant um, uh, and of course you know the, the the boringness can be offset by doing a, a, a star field that's that's you know controlled and animated through code and all that pretty pretty efficient I mean you take a small hit on it but uh, um, you're still uh, way way ahead with the uh, the benefits of just clearing it you know that, that, that going to that so there's there's certainly some some uh, benefits and stuff that, that goes both ways um, and then that of course uh, reduces the amount of of space needed for the first two screens as well um, so you know you, you cut what 24k off of each one of those um, you know plus the 64k that you've got here so now you're you're, you're well into the 100k range um, for uh, for audio and, and and more graphics so I mean that that, that actually opens up a lot because I you know a game like this you want to have some really short uh, audio so that's that's going to be kind of the thing maybe a couple long ones but you know I should have some memory left over for something like that um, so yeah there's there's all kinds of benefits to um, uh, to doing some of this stuff and, and you know particularly like pasting it so anyway I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get started on, on updating these because these these actually uh, I've been putting it off because it's actually a pain in the butt to do it that that's that's the only reason it's just a massive pain in the ass um, so and the the way that it's being loaded now is is that I use the package loader, and the package loader is uh, table driven. Um, you essentially give it a uh, an ID, uh, which is really just an index into a table, um, or should be, uh, and um, uh, then you give it within that table definition, you know, the, the function that's used to load it. Um, and of course, you can include the size and you know whatever you want for that particular um, ID. So it allows you to to configure um, your loading pretty uh, uh, 
to, to kind of suit your needs. And it's got all kinds of, of support functions that uh, um, that go along with it, including stuff for for handling um, uh, RLE based, uh, you know, simple RLE based compression. Um, uh, things like ZX0 compression is actually built into the file system. So if you're actually reading data in, you can just compress the file and, and, and hook that up. So but, um, uh, uh, let's see, where is it? It's actually a lot of that is defined in our common data or shared data, really. Um, so that's going to be data shared. So yeah, here's the table right here. So this is the asset section load table. Now these these are the only files that actually uh, or only assets that are not baked directly into the game. Um, all of the the uh, um, uh, sprites and all of that are, are are baked, and I actually need to separate that because I can generate um, an export list which has uh, um, all you know specifically tagged symbols so that I can just include it into into this and makes it uh, makes it a lot easier. But handling it only takes like you know a tenth of a second to build the shit, so <laughs> don't care. Um, but uh, but anyway, so uh, so in this case, you know, you, you've got your different IDs here. Uh, you know, one is is the palette. Believe it or not, I'm using the same palette across uh, the entire game um, at the moment. Although that's probably going to change, as I mentioned yesterday, in the uh, uh, while adding the palette control. Um, so, and I may do a quick look at that because I've really cleaned that up. I had to add some some uh, locking in there so that there was no trampling on it between the IRQ and all that. But anyway, uh, so this uh, is is set up so that the the first argument um, and, and they're all uh, uh, Word values, um, uh, and there's four entries per, or, or four um, uh, words per uh, 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 entry. So uh, the first one is the, the function that's used to load it, and then the next three are just arguments uh, that can be passed uh, to it. Now we're only going to be interested in, in uh, the, the first argument, just like we are here. But in this case, um, I'm using one of the, the existing functions to to load um, uh, raw data. Um, just a, ch a chunk of memory in, into it. But that function doesn't quite work well for us, so we're going to be mo having to modify that too. So I've already looked at some of this stuff ahead of time because this is actually going to be a pain in the ass to do. Um, and then, of course, right now we're, we're specifying the MMU block that it, uh, that it it's stored in, but um, that's not going to work because we're going to be consolidating them. So we also need the... Um, uh, we're also going to need the address, but we don't know that yet because we could... You know, organize these in, in any direction. Now we could go ahead and, and pre-calculate that, um, but there are going to be other assets that that um, get the same type of treatment. Um, so you know, being able to build a, a separate table or place that data in the table where it's best suited um, makes a lot more sense. So we're going to go with uh, with doing a programmatic approach where we kind of keep track of um, the uh, the memory and, and, and where it's going. Um, because we're going to have to to be able to to, to reference that uh, that somehow, and we need to make sure that that data is going to be available. Now, we could certainly look at um, doing this the the section load table, but that's not guaranteed um, necessarily to be mapped into memory um, based on what uh, package loader uh, you're going on. So I think we're going to create a separate table for right now, um, but. Uh, that doesn't mean that I will not revisit that package loader at some point here in the near future because there's some integration and all kinds of other stuff, particularly in dealing with uh, sounds because the sounds will be loaded uh, this way and the, the, uh, the wavetable actually needs to be built uh, from that so that it's, it's all done dynamically. And I, I really don't want to be having to calculate that shit out every time something changes because you, you change the first one, you got to change everything else and that's just such a pain in the ass. So. At least having that separate table for right now should uh, should work. Um, and who knows, maybe we will uh, we will repurpose it because this technically should only be used once. But uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to have other section load tables for um, uh, for loading uh, stage specific data, which is something that I've got this dream. Um, and uh, and I mean, it's not like this project isn't you know big enough as it is. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at, at some of the things that we're going to need. First, we're going to need the MMU, MMU, and we're going to need the uh, kind of the address of the offset of where it starts. So uh, let's uh, let's start with a uh, simple data structure, I guess. You know what? I let's see. Sorry, I got a, an alert on Facebook, and I figured I might as well go check it out. I keep on getting some some ones that are repeating, and I 
flushed all my stuff and I want to make sure that was still not happening. Um, so anyway, so we're going to start with a simple uh, data structure here today. Um, let's see, we want to uh, call this um, Um, actually, let's go with something a little more generic. Mapped resource. All right, so now we've got a fancy name for it. Um, we're going to need a couple of data members. The first is the um, the MMU that it starts in. Oops, I'm going to struct. And the second is the address. I might make that an offset, but I think for right now I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do address. So we'll let the uh, we'll let the image the new image loader or the map to resource loader take care of that. Um, all right. So and I think for now we're just gonna. Kind of make it specific to one. So let's, uh, in fact, we need to do this. Map to resource. And we've got all of these. So we are going to make a bunch of things that we can reference because these, uh, these blocks are all referenced from each of the states, which is the next thing that we will need to, uh, to update. Um, so let's see here. So we've got plain page. We'll want to have something similar to uh, to what we're doing here. Uh, we need game over and background one. All right, so. Let's do this. Do something fancy like that. Let's get these. Mm. Do not like that, said Sam. I not sure about that, said Sam. I am. Actually, you know what? I was thinking because I want to be able to access those as um, the the uh, members, but I'll always be accessing them off of an index register, so I'll be using the mapped resource name rather than the actual uh, name of it. But I still need those to reference from the um, uh, states. So let's do this. Oops. Macro, and we want the MMU block and the address. And we are going to do this so that we can uh, we can do this in kind of a a stepped way, so that we can get uh, one part of it uh, updated first, so that we know we're not running into any problems. And that's the updates to the um, to the states, because there's about a dozen states and every single one of them needs to be to be updated um, although some of them don't actually point to to one at all and then there's actually code um, that's associated with uh, you know decompressing those into memory that has to be uh, uh, updated so we want to make sure that we get the the references to them um, done on oh I kind of want to make sure it's all working because that actually means uh, uh, that means changing the data that's in the um, um, state instances themselves, which is a pain in the butt. So let me see here. All right, so we want a new block and FTD address. I'm going to do that and that and
Oh, these should all be zero. In fact, like that. So they'll start off at zero because we don't know where they are. Um, and we'll be loading that information in along with it. So we don't need any of that. But we do want to start off with the MW block so that when we update our state code, we can still reference the, uh, the original value that we were using before because that's expected to be in there anyway because oh, we'll, we'll be referencing it in the future anyway so let's see style page and we've got armory oops forgot game over All right, that should uh, that should do it. We'll of course move these out into a more appropriate place later on. Um, all right, and we are going to need to make a custom loader uh, for this so that it, uh, it it starts everything. So let's um, well let's uh, that should build just fine. Yeah. Now we're at 98,492 lines. I, I need to get a, a code counter that goes through and, and um, or actually I may update Chasm uh, to do it so that it doesn't include, um, or keeps a separate count that doesn't include um, macro expansion and allow me to turn it on and off for specific like files and all that. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll also uh, just download a program that counts the lines off of the files for me and supports a similar that would probably be much, much easier and a better use of my time um, that I'm not going to have. But hey, you know what? I've got my most stuffed cookies. Uh, in fact, I may have one here in a minute because uh, I think I already deserve it. Uh, I love that tea. It's good. It's good old, good old fashioned lifted made with, made with real sugar, real pure cane sugar. So if I don't need it, no, need any more. No. All right, so I think next, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add this into, uh, let's see, update texture loader. Save that off. No. Nope. Uh, let's see, doing this is going to be a pain in the ass. So I'll make sure I don't miss any. But let's see, actors, states. Yeah, see these down here. Oops, I can't select them all. Oh, there we go. There's no actual instances of any of those, so I don't have to change any data in there. But in general and in game stage, all of these, every single one of these has to be updated. So let's uh, let's go to scene state because that's where we're going to be doing it at. And this one right here, background res, and that's going to be two bytes instead of one. So that's why we have to go through and update everything. Oh. Oh, no, that the uh, bullshit again. But. Game changer should be pretty easy. That should be uh, should be null for pretty much all of them. Well, except for begin stage. That one last. Um, so stage one. Background. I want to keep that comment. What the hell? There's my keyboard. All right. So is there more than one state here? That's the glyph list. That that needs to actually go away. I can just use the uh, text renderer now. Uh, that's in there. All right, and then time delayed. So there's no none there either. 
And then we've got another one down here. And another one down here. I don't know why I have so many of these. I shouldn't need them. We'll have to go in and look at that later. All right, so all of that is done. So let's go back over here to, uh, oh, that's fine. And this is going to be the background block. So let's get rid of stage one. Move balls, add balls. Lots and lots of balls. All right, so this is the background. So we want to look at this. It's an FDD. So we're, we're looking at the, the mapped resource now. We'll pull the MMU block that we need out of, uh, out of that. So, uh, so you know, that should be a, a, a fun task. But that, that's just as a minor uh, look at the code. And then, of course, we'll, we'll pull it. We'll, we have to get the data in there first when we load it. And that's, that's going to be the real difficult, uh, difficult task. So, all right, let's see. Um, oops. There we go. All right, so add balls. Make sure there's no other. Oops. You know what? I'm just going to do this. Begin stage. Okay, there's no other. And remove balls. Doesn't have any. Yeah, add balls didn't have any either, right? Yeah. And yeah, so that's that. All right. Oh, and then the uh, stage completed. Yeah, don't have, only have one of those. But time delayed. That's the one with multiples. Those all. Those don't. Uh, those do not draw anything. All right. So they all looked. Uh, they all looked good. All right. FDB. Oops. FDB. FDB. All right, that's begin stage, and that's uh, that's an FTD as well. All right, so well, if any one of them blows up uh, or uh, doesn't uh, um, as a screwed up background, we know why. All right, let's see. So now we've got to do the uh, these, which yeah, all of these have one. <laughs> so usually the uh, well, let's see. We got the styled page, the uh, armory page. Um, well, actually, blank, blank doesn't do anything. Oh well, that that that's like the, the most generic one too. That doesn't do a damn thing. <laughs> well, it does do some uh, some palette stuff. I may have to. I, I shouldn't actually need that anymore. Actually, I should probably look at removing that, since I've got the uh, the palette fades. Um, I can trust that it's going to fade to black, and fade from black to to whatever colors they are. I can trust that, I think. No. I don't think there's been any views on this. Maybe I should post this to Facebook. <laughs> so maybe I will. No, it's too much of a too much of a nuisance on there with it. <laughs> I mean, I've been posting about one one a day. I mean, I've, I've actually been finding time. I've actually had a lot lot of um, opportunity to do that. I'm mean, not gonna have this much anywhere near as much free time over the next few weeks. In fact, I may not um, have any. I may not be able to do any uh, any get any development on, which means I won't be able. To, definitely won't be able to do any videos, which is gonna kind of suck. Uh, all right, so we got our background res here. So we should probably go in and do these. All right, so. Uh, and that's we need to go back over here to data shared. So da -da. we can get rid of that for right now. And then active game menu is the style page. All right. And that's an FDB. Armory goes to the armory page, of course. And that is an FDB as well. Yay. Okay, and uh, blank doesn't actually do anything. There's there's no instance here. This is just the rendering code for the armory. Chumps goes to the styled page. Yay. Oops. Crap. 
credits is the styled page as well. Game over is the game over page. Uh, style page. Let's skip over that, uh, that last one there. Options. Actually, options is the plain page. DB. Start game. That is, yes, that is the styled page. I'll have to go back and update the uh, comments later on. So I know those will be out of whack. And then this is going to be the title page. That's an FDB as well. Let's get rid of the armory. No credits, high score, sack game, options. Then you have still got game over. And that's an FDB as well. Aha. Background block. All right, let's see title. Now we need to look at this. Okay, we've got our background res. Hmm. Well, there's a couple of things that shouldn't be happening here, like that uh, set active. Well, no, set active what should be up there. That's just a bad place to be doing it. Um, let me see this here, because. This actually should not be doing that. It's First of all, this should be skipping it if it's zero. So I don't know what the hell is going on there. Let's take a look down here. Okay, well, all the errors are on the same line, so all 270. Oh, well, let's see. Do we still need X after this? Doesn't seem so. All right. So we're going to do this. And that is... Oops. Oh, no. That is... Uh, shared data. Left resource. Yeah, I need to find a place for that mapped resource. All right, so we've got the address of the uh, Oh, that doesn't make any damn sense. Oh, okay. No, actually, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay, that's why. Duh, because of the, uh, the set active full, okay. And I don't think that's true anymore for the I don't think that set active full thrashes it anymore. 
Okay, so X adds the uh, the address. I wish I'd commented that better. All right, so we grab the instance of this, and we grab the uh, uh, ME block from the map resource, and we should be good to go. <coughs> so that map builds fine. But, let's see what I want to do now. Actually, maybe I should uh, test it a little bit, but I want to make sure. Let's do this. Let's go into my memory map. And we're going to find texture dot. Okay, so the texture reg and, and mem we're going to keep there, but going to kind of hide those. I want to make sure that those aren't being used anywhere else. I guess I could do a search for each one, but ah. all right, so where do I need to change that at? I need to change that in here. And, ha -ha. Mm. Those are going to go away, so I don't care if I name them. All right, so yeah, these we want to have accessing that for right now, because we're still going to stash them in the same place. See, later on we'll just change these with, uh, oops, with uh, these. I should find a place to put that mapped resource into. In fact, I can probably just dump that into, uh, well, it's kind of my dump all place for the moment. Probably be a better place for it because we're not going to change that. Don't need to. Well, I might rename this to offset, but we'll see. All right, so we got this. Let's drop that into there. Package loading tables. Okay, we've got everything set up there. That should do just fine. And all this should work. Once we boot it up, we should get the regular title screen and everything else. We'll, we'll try everything else except for like the, the game over and all that. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I mean, if shit doesn't work later on, I know why. Pretty damn obvious why. And so I'm, I'm, I'm craving another cookie. That's for damn sure. All right, so we've got that up there. All right, first test of uh, any changes. So. Oh, yay! Looks like everything is, is working. All we've really managed to do is make the current process of doing it a little more convoluted. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. The, the, the next way of doing it will be a lot, lot better, a lot more efficient. And, and I'll even be able to change some of the other stuff uh, over to it. Um, Pretty well. I'm, uh, it depends on depends on what I can do with uh, with automatically generating some of these uh, these tables, but that requires some uh, some changes to the uh, Chaos Toolkit so that uh, I can have kind of like a batch processing mode where uh, where I process all of the uh, like all the sprites um, at the same time. I mean, I can kind of order stuff a little bit better um, for sure, but uh, uh, I can actually uh, Eliminate some uh, some duplicates uh, out of um, some of the custom restore functions that are going to be created. All right, so credits was fine, jumps was fine, options good, high scores good, new game so far, armory this armory armory looks good. And begin game. All right. So I'd say everything working pretty good so far. So I'm going to go ahead and commit this, and uh, so we can kind of move on. So everything, uh, yeah, updating each one of those. Uh, um, actually, no, I'm going to eyeball this kind of stuff. Okay, FTV. Yeah, you, I don't think you can you can see this. In, uh, um, getting my diff windows open. No offense to Visual Studio Code. I just need to update the the diff colors that are used. Um, 
but uh, I just like the, I like tortoise git. I just always, I've, I've used it for a long time. Um, so I'm real familiar with it. So yeah, everything so far is looking pretty good. I don't think we'll have any, any surprise, uh, surprises, you know, things that don't work, but, uh, I will certainly, uh, Try it. Of course, I guess one of the reasons why I wouldn't see the uh, that you know um, you know not checking for zero that I mentioned before is that uh, all of the ones that that like have no image the uh, all of that the the uh, that functionality isn't even used that that draw scene background is just skipped it's, it goes to a no op function which does nothing in returns I mean that's uh, um, so I wouldn't see it even though it probably should be supported because I mean. Who knows? There could be other drawing stuff that gets in there later on that makes it necessary. Who knows? But uh, that's neither here nor there. It's not something that I actually need to worry about at the moment. So yeah, I'm just looking at the army, just making sure everything is an FDB. Yep. High school. Yep, I know. It must be boring for you, FDB. Be less boring if I mean or earlier when I was uh, when uh, I, I got a few minutes I wanted to play around with something and um, so I, I loaded up and started you know, type, just typing in code just kind of goofing around and I ended up blowing stuff up it was it was nice and pretty it really was um, so all right so let's we've got everything good there yeah those changes uh, I, I hate making changes to the state instances because I mean, that's when things can go wrong. And the more you have to do, the more chance you have of something going wrong. And since I had to do all of them, yeah, do the math. Where is my uh, window here? There we go. Okay, so we've got all this in. Now, the next thing we need to do is kind of replace this function here and that's going to be kind of the next stage because then we'll be able to get rid of uh, these X texture things now that we've got so let's uh, let's take a look at this because we're gonna we're gonna play around with this a little bit um, so now this would actually work fine if it wasn't for one uh, one itty bitty little problem and that is that it always loads in starting at the same address um, now it handles um, uh, crossing uh, MMU boundaries or segment boundaries, no problem, you know, to hex 2000, hex 4000, 8000, so on. Um, that isn't any problem, but that, that initial load address um, just <laughs> um, kind of like gets in the way. Um, so I've got to uh, update this a little bit so that I can um, uh, do both, so that I can use this as part of the um, uh, a loader as I do now so that you know if I want to load it into a specific MMU address I can do that um, but also use it in something where you know that, that MMU address comes from someplace else um, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to name it but I've got to I've got to change some of this stuff up so you know and of course the uh, uh, the first thing that it does is is uh, read a word um, and then um, saves that um, but uh, I think that cause these are, are loaded into a very specific region, um, which is defined within the the, the, uh, the chaos um, library. So this is like since the package actually is part of uh, package loader is part of chaos that, that kind of defines all that stuff. So um, I'll have to do some uh, some adjustments later, but at the same time that also lets me um, do some stuff now. Setting the MMU that's uh, that's kind of a bummer. Um, so I'm going to have to change this up a little bit and this is not essential code so I mean that this is you know something that, that happens you know a few times at, low, at startup and you know it's, it's nothing that necessarily has to be optimized for for speed as much as it needs to be functionally reusable in a lot of different situations um, and the less code you have to duplicate the better because I mean it's not just you know code space either it's um, you know, having to maintain that code, you make a little change, you got to do it to both of them. Why go through that hassle? Why churn two pieces of code I mean, when you can only do one? Well, you only have to do one. 
So now this is actually since this is part of the uh, the loader or the package loader, um, the uh, it actually gets some um, specific uh, arguments in, in the register. So X is the uh, the package loader configuration, uh, which is package configure. That's kind of a global um, thing that's passed on to it. Um, and then Y is the address of the the section loader, which will be um, this piece right here. See that 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 piece right there will be. Um, where we're defining the uh, the texture. So this um, and it's the the, the uh, this the address of this is you know of course in there. Um, but this is where we get our, our argument. So that's off of the uh, the Y register. Um, so that's where where this comes in. So as long as we've got the Y register still mapped in, we um, we know which MMU. Whoa! What the hell was that? Do, 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 do. Damn, my hand was not anywhere near that space bar, man. Well, it is it is October, man. It's just be haunted, you know. So, so anyway, so what this will do is is um, uh, I need to be able to call at some point some of this code in here, um, with uh with uh, the register already in B, um, but I have to use the read word in order to get the uh, the size, um, so that's that's a suck suck ass pain thing. So I'm just gonna stick it up on the stack um, and, and kind of uh, make that uh, my thing. Um, so I have to do something like this. Because this has to be the, the same thing. This has to pull its information from here. And then we want, do we care about X? We do not care about what is in X at this moment. So we're going to move this up to here. So that way, it because uh, Leroy X knows the, the thing. So we're just going to do two. Actually, you know what? I'm going to comment that out for right now because I'm going to change that name. Um, so we still got our same stuff, so we're gonna have to save some registers here. And oops. I think I just need to do B right now. Ooh, and that's a bummer. So I can actually just do uh There we go. Okay. That works for me. And then I can, uh, well, that's B. And I think that's essentially the same damn thing. All right. So, save a new block. On stack. And then uh, get started. There we go. So, and that should essentially be the same thing. I don't think any other changes there because X is read word should not be bunking up X. I mean, that's the only reason why that wouldn't work. Um, so, and then we can call this directly, and then this right here will just fall through, and uh, we will uh, we'll add our code outside of chaos since it's specific to what we're doing. So and, and this is this right here. If this doesn't work, it's definitely going to be a screen full of ass. Because this this right here, it's it's error, ability to handle uh, um, uh, incorrect data is uh, just phenomenally non-existent. Really, it just it's just not there. Um, it checks like uh, the header signature of the overall file, but it doesn't like check any signature of each individual um, uh, resource. So you end up with a, a screen full of ass. So um, that's something that I've got to incorporate here. Um, right before it does this read word, read word, it goes in and it checks it for a particular signature. And if it's not, then it uh, does a, uh, a switch instruction or a software uh, interrupt instruction. I keep on calling it switch, but a, a um, 
software interrupt uh, uh, to kick that off, and it, it goes into an error handler that blue screens and tells you here that you know I have screwed something up. So let's take let's let's give this a quick uh, load up and see. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a screen of ass, or it's not. And we've got uh, we've got success. Yeah, so pretty easy stuff, I guess, so far. Um, but now I get to to manage stuff that uh, kind of a pain in the ass. All right, what do we have here? I think and we can uh, we can actually get rid of, of that. So and actually I am without music. So if you are watching this, uh, you have uh, way too much time on your hands. That's that's for sure. All right, so what do we have here tonight? All right, so everything is uh, is working good. We've got that. I think we should be able to call. Um, we should be able to call that function with our with our own startup. So we've we've got um, an idea. Now we've got to be mindful here because the the address that these images are used at when they're decompressed is different um, than the memory address used when they are loaded in. Um, so that is um, something that I need to take take into account. Um, here when I start, uh, you know, loading the data and, and um, tracking where we are um, from the start of somewhere. So anyway, let's uh, l before we do this, I think uh, actually, you know, what, I'm gonna I'm gonna commit this because that doesn't take too long. This this one is I don't even need to check it. So we're gonna go. Let's see, get rid of that state. I don't think I need scene state anymore, at least not for the moment. Uh, title I don't need data shared I am going to need to reference here so um, not quite ready to, to actually that's what exactly what we're going to do next we're going to get rid of these uh, these um, texture blocks in here so that they're only used in this one specific location um, and that, that'll start our uh, kind of start our, uh, our function for um, uh, custom building so I've already got a, a file added here so that I can add some stuff to it I always think ahead with getting files because it's like the most boring thing to have to do on um that's not let's see now we're just going to call this package support it's just the most annoying thing to watch in a video i mean it, and, and boring i mean even more boring than this um all right so we want load Load texture. All right, so now we're going to change this up. So let's let's go over here to package loader. Um, and here, let's let's uh, copy some of this over. Make sure we've got something to reference here, because we want to make sure that we know what's in here. Because this this why here is uh, is important. And let's see. Curious settings because this destroys all. I really don't care about any of that right now. But so we've got to deal with this, and we're going to change that kind of up to um, to this. Oh, X. And I'll start off with you. Um, so that's going to be uh, two comma y. So we've got our, our loader descriptor, and I, I really really need to get um, uh, data structure in for that. In fact, let me check to see if maybe I didn't already add that and just forgot about it. Block node block pool. Oh yes, I did. Section loader descriptor. Perfect. And argument one. So we're going to use this to uh, to fill in the MMU, MMU block and the uh, and the address uh, for loading that. So we're going to have to, to do some tricks. So this right here is going to just load a specific texture. We're going to get LDU. So that, that this is in U. And we want to get uh, oops 
dot dot and view block. And then LDX, actually, we are going to do that the same as that because we're going to do a little quick test here just to make sure that everything gets passed correctly. And we need to do this. We'll just change that load raw into make it a little more expressive and then we're going to go we're just going to jump don't care about anything else i don't think we actually care what's in you um but you know what? actually i think i'm going to change that over to x because i'm going to be doing something with that later on all right so we've got x uh, get our b from x, uh, mmv lock x m and then we load our x with the um the default loader so this should actually uh get us into the realm of not relying on those memory blocks anymore. So let's go over here to our uh, data shared. We can do this. But we are dependent on these. So let's just try one for the other, except uh, the other has to receive uh, an update or needs to be uh, initialized at load. So we've got styled page. Yeah, I keep on copying these stuff everywhere. And background. Wow. Being my insane names. All right, so signature, okay, that, uh, Never ever gonna read that anyway. All right, so we got everything uh, in there. That looks uh, like that looks pretty good. Load the uh, oops. Yeah, let's see. Look, take a look at our oops package loader. Package support. Okay, but that doesn't. And it, since it doesn't need the package configuration, it doesn't care. So we'll fix that up in the documentation later on. That should actually load just fine. To know where to load it and the load of starting at the default address and we'll actually be updating that later on we'll, we'll manage the the uh, the enemy block to, to start with and the uh, the uh, loader but we will actually have to go in and make sure that this load raw data into returns the information that we need because we need to know where it ended we need to know what that you know because if it crosses those in the new boundaries then we need to know you know hey what address should it start so we can save that for the next time um, what MMU did it, you know, block did it start on, you know, so we can save that for next time. Um, you know, because some may, may, uh, may go across two or three, uh, you know, different blocks, who knows. Let's see, oops. So, oops, I uh, modified that first. I shouldn't have done that. I need my sign. How about some Eye of the Tiger? So, all right. Yes, I have Eye of the Tiger now. That's awesome. So this one should be interesting to, to see. I, I'm still waiting for a screen full ass. Nothing's, nothing has actually blown up tonight. And I'm really, um, really shocked that I haven't, you know, managed to screw something up. Still, still haven't, still haven't, you know, messed anything up, man. That's, that's, I mean, I have to keep on trying. Um, so I notice there's actually some, uh, some viewers now. So, uh, I'm, I'm consolidating memory. Um, and uh, in fact, let me uh, let me back up a little bit just for those that are joining in the middle of it, uh, so you don't have to go the way, all the way back to the beginning and figure out what's going on. Um, so recently, when I added the uh, the fonts for the uh, for the menus, um, change colors. Now each one of those instances of this font takes up 8K, and well, almost 8K, uh, but I'm dedicating 8K block to it. So in doing that, I, I realized that it's it's long overdue to uh, be uh, consolidating some memory because here is the uh, here is the current memory map. So every single MMU block uh, in the, uh, the, the five, in a 512K machine, all, all 64 blocks, all, all but one of them are um, um, being used for something. Um, now I've got you know my screens. If you you'll have to go back to the first one because that's kind of a involved actually <laughs> description. Um, but you know a lot of sprite banks, you know th things that and, and a lot of things that can be consolidated. If you look at all of those numbers, I mean there's certainly room to consolidate that. And what I'm doing now is is consolidating these right here. They're uh, using 48K. 
should only be using 24 at least for the size that they are. I'm, I'm going to dedicate another 8K block to them at some point, I'm sure. Um, but uh, these uh, need to really be consolidated. I mean, 261 bytes. I mean, that, it compresses a 28K <laughs> image down to 261 bytes. That's it's pretty impressive. So, so anyway, back to what I was doing. So, okay, so this works. Um, so now I've got to get the uh, the MMU block um, and the the memory, and that's got to be filled in um, there now instead of um, of doing that. So what we are going to do is you know what? Yeah. No, that's just going to make it. I think that might make it too. Uh, Uh, mapped resources, current pointer, oops, current location, all right, so we've got to add a different thing in here for this, we want uh, texture, well, we'll just do textures block. All right, so let's actually go out and find this one because we're gonna we're gonna be replacing all of those real shortly. All right, textures dot block start block, and that's we're gonna keep that at thirty two. Now I'm not gonna get rid of these quite yet, um, but I am gonna do this. Mark those as deprecated just so I know. So those are going away. These will get renamed to uh, textures as well. Um, so I'm going to go up here and make sure that that's the correct block. That's the one. That's the first one. We got 32. All right. So we're good there. All right. Start block. We'll go back over to here and. Uh, I knew this was going to happen just for this one goddamn thing. Oh, man. Let's just do this. All right. So I need one here to do this because I need to set. I'm going to use this as kind of the uh, the current location where we are with the MMU block as well as the, um, the address. So I need to add that. And that's... Um, my keyboard's going wonky again, man. It won't respond. All right, and we need to go back to this memory map because uh, there are some registers in here that I've got to... Actually, I don't think that they are defined in this one. I think these are actually defined in chaos. No. Okay, so uh, let me look at the package loader. Because that would be in here. Okay, loader reg. That's what we're in. All right, all right, down here at the bottom. All right. So this is the stuff we got to use here. These, these right here are the, uh, the, the items that we've got to do. So let's actually do this. That's just a single 8K block. And all right, so we've got, let's see, yeah, that goes to that. So we want to go over here to uh, data shared. We're going to initialize that with that. All right, so we've got a, a, a starting place for um, for all of this stuff right here, or for the, uh, the uh, Starting block and then the uh, the the loader. And what'll happen is is that um, this function is going to do it. So it looks like right here that the return. I mean this it already says that this thrashes all registers. So we don't have to worry too much about that. Um, but it does seem to, uh, to to be that it returns both X and B um, like you would expect, uh, or, or containing the the end address and the, um, the the end MMU. So we'll be able to set this stuff back. 
um, into uh, the, uh, the um, our, with our loader support here when we uh, when we start digging into it. And I'm going to do that here in a minute, but I think maybe first I might just uh, might even have me a cookie or something. So I mean, I've already had one. I've already had one that gave me some uh, that gave me a little bit of energy. You know, that sugar rush, man. I mean, look at that. That that's that's most stuff, man. I mean, that that's a ton of sugar. Shouldn't be eating them. I really shouldn't be. It's so freaking delicious, man. I am almost out of tea, though. That's that's kind of depressing. That's kind of depressing. I'm almost out of tea. So anyway, back to this. Let's see. Um. All right. So I got the um. Oh, this should be fine. So when we get, we'll load this. No information from here. I know it, but when we do that, we're also going to have to update our uh, scene state so that um, it doesn't use it. So we should be able to actually, I'm betting that, uh, okay, memory map, you got some stuff in there, package support, that's us, and then the package loader. But that doesn't seem to be used. Um, oh, that's right, because we actually have to adjust the um, the address uh, in order to account for the differences between um, the, uh, where it's loaded and where it's going to be mapped into later when it's decompressed. Um, so, and I'll be digging through and finding all of that uh, that information at uh, at some point. Let's see how long have I been doing this? Wow, a little over an hour and a, a little over an hour, like an hour and six minutes, seven minutes, something like that. And uh, I got to say, I, I I've I haven't made actually much progress all things considered um then again i'm i'm, I'm talking a tremendous you know a tremendous amount about what i'm doing so so let's take oh excuse me take a look at uh what we've got going on here actually you know, i'm going to stash this into our commits um And all that looks good. So that's a good start. So of course this this will be um, used with some other uh, other resources, some other asset um, types that I have to uh, to load in and kind of do the same thing. So luckily, uh, so I, I guess you know lo naming it load uh, textures is kind of bad. Actually, you know what? I know exactly what to call it. Load mapped resource. Load. Uh, oops. This makes it nice and long. So let's uh let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so we got all that, and that should work just fine. You know, let me uh, exit up out of here, and this should work just just fine. We haven't really done anything, so. so I've got my map resources here so the scenes can access them. Now it'll just become a, I don't know, probably get rid of the map resource kind of thing, but. And we've got our loader here, our loader table, so that references that as well, so that should be filling in those blanks. So yeah, everything's loaded fine. So I guess I could uh, add the manager. So, uh, your memory map, memory map, Kumo Inc. We want package support. Make sure we've got an RTS statement. <laughs> So all right, we're gonna do this and uh, data shared. We're gonna pull it out of current location. Hmm.
Well, let's do this. Address. All right, so we've got that in that, and we are we'll go back to doing you here. All right, so you is the address of the match resource, which is this puppy right here, or whichever one that happens to be, and it pulled it out of there, so that's all we really need. So we got A and X, so, or B and X. Um, we're gonna set it in there. Ooh, bummer. All right, well, we can use Y for that. Um, okay, so we've got the ME block from the current location, the address from the uh, starting address from the current location. Um, so that'll all get passed on to, uh, to that. And uh, we're going to set that um, MEB block in the current one. Now we need to get the address, so we're going to do this. I love the instruction set and the register set on the uh, 6809. It's just... <sighs> I would I would probably be be smacking myself in the face a lot if I had to do this like on a crappy CPU like a 6502 or something, you know that uh, God that would be a disaster. So wow I can't believe I ate that cookie already man. I'm craving another one but I'm not gonna eat another one for a while. All right so we've got um you know actually we need to go back over to the uh, to the MMU. Or the member map because there's a couple of things in there that I need. The first is the loader mem, so we know that that is. Uh, and where am I? I forget where I am mapping that. Maybe that's in texture. Pretty sure that's texture mem. Let's double check that in the. Uh, Scene state. Okay, draw scene. That goes here to draw scene background. Oh, well. I would know if I actually was smart enough to use the symbolics like I should be because that's why I created them and I did not save that. Okay, so we'll do that and get memory map back in here. All right, so mem is it that's eight thousand i will definitely have to go back and fix this fix that while i'm working in here um we've got uh regs all right so the mims is going to be eight thousand there so we know that let's uh, get this over here we're gonna do this come to you Oh, wow, wait a minute. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. That, uh, what am I thinking? I was thinking the uh, MMU uh, or the segment MMU segment register rather than the actual MMU block. All right, set. And get the MMU to start loading. I set the MMU block. Yeah, we need to get the address. Okay, so the uh, oh bummer, that's not right. I'll go through and probably reorder this later, but 
Oh, wait a minute. It should be comma X. All right, so we've got uh, perfect. All right, so that's good. We're just going to store Y in uh, that resource that address. Let's see, da, da, da. save it in the that resource and go. And now they are in the exact same registers, so I don't really have to do anything right there. So Separate that out. All right. So now we're going to have to update the um, scene state. All right, so that's still in X, so that's perfect. Mapped resource, address, comma, X. Now I got a feeling this, it, this should be a, a full screen of ass. This should totally, this should totally die. <laughs> uh, getting the address to decompress it into, okay, so that is fine. And there's a limit of 8K on the background or on those big textures, so at least for the moment. Um, although, uh, I mean, if I make sure that they're in a specific order, I guess I could probably you know, like seed that. But um, I don't need to do that. 8K is, you never, don't need more than 8K. So, um, all right, so that looks good. I have a feeling this is just, wow, yeah. Oh, bummer. Wait a minute, left resources. Yeah, this is actually a problem with the... Um, with Chasm, actually. It has a really big problem with the forward references because right now I'm in the middle of updating the uh, how the symbol table works to give it... Uh, a much more strict mode but uh, if which makes something like this a very unique type uh, and it doesn't resolve those too well if they are not um, or if there's a forward reference to them man where am I where am I including that anyway I mean, I guess I could just move the data in, in with that. It's not going to make, I mean, it it's, doesn't matter. So let me do this. Probably a better place for it anyway. And then we could add in something like reset it later on or to set it to something else. Actually, take care of that problem. Nope. What else am I accessing? Oh, something else has got to be accessing. What is it? Oh, right.
Ah, it's not a problem with chasm. Well, not a bug anyway. That's how uh, macros work, actually. More of a inherent limitation of it being a macro in the way that a macro has to work. So we can get around that easy enough. Label. Oh, no, we can't. God damn it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make that happen. Because we really do want that like that. Let's see, that's resource. So let's do this. Initialize the package. Loader. Now it's resource package loader. All right, so we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and initialize it like I just said we were because we need to. It's just better code that way. And we can just do an LDU there. Let's see. Uh, address. Uh, it's redundant as fuck. All right. All right, that should be uh, enough. Okay, so we've got our starting block, our loader mem. Um, so we're, I think we're good there. Let's go back over and check this. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. But big stuff is in here. All right. So we're grabbing uh, grabbing this. Start in a new block and address. Set info in the mapped resource that adjusted uh, with and then down here is uh. An address. Okay, so that looks uh, that looks good, and I have a feeling that this is just gonna blow the fuck on up. So let's look at scene state. Okay, so we're grabbing the map address from there, which is all we really really need to do. And we were already grabbing the MME block from before, so that we know was uh, was working. So let's build it and um, see what we screwed up. <laughs> like y'all had a choice in the matter. Yeah, I've got one viewer. I had three earlier. That's cool, though. Hello, viewer. And I keep on getting, like, spam posts to the live videos. For some reason, it's only the live ones. It's never the any of the other ones. Or it doesn't seem like it's any of those. It's only the live ones. Of course, I haven't done, like, any pre-recorded stuff here recently. Um, usually, those are the ones that, like, have like real prep involved. Um, always nice to not screw up live. Wow. I'm impressed that I even got to the to the beginning screen. I mean is that actually being done? Um, I I guess it would be. Wow. I'm Okay, the chumps. Oh, one did blow up. Oh. Oh, 
Okay, well let's uh, let's try that again. Let's see what other ones have, uh, are not working right. Because the chumps, I think, let me double check that. The chumps may be the very last one. Let's see, that is in assets, asset pack. No, it's not. It's, uh, see the chumps is the styled page. Ooh, okay. So that means that the uh, new game should die as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh one, two. Okay, that's the third one in, which means there's going to be a um, an MMU boundary cross there. So that, at least we have an idea what to look for. Um, get rid of that. Let's take a look at our memory map. See how well. Uh, Okay, so yeah, that style page. Okay, so you got the the title and the plane page. Okay, those seem to those seem to load just fine. Those seem to to, to load just fine. Um, but once we get to the style page, that's that's where the problem is. So maybe there's a lack of communication between uh, our loader and uh, the one in the package support. So because Restoring the address back there. Hmm. Let's take a look at oh scene state real quick. Okay, that's the Okay, that's fine. I don't see any problems there. Package loader. All right, so it gets a byte, uh branches if it's done. Uh or branches if carry set are clear I guess I should probably skip something if it doesn't Well, for one, I'm not adjusting X. Hmm. Well, maybe if I do this. Reset it back to load memory. Because we're only reading a word or a byte at a time, which I should probably go in there and do a uh, read ex so that I can actually read multiple bytes at a time. I can do that. You reset the beginning of load buffer, so that should take it. Okay. And then Yeah, it'll either read until the end of the file or until it's done counting. So, got to reset back to the beginning. There was a bug in there. I didn't even know it. Because nothing I was loading was greater than 8K, so it never would have bombed out. All right, we know that one is doing it. So, let's look at the chumps. Yay. All right. So, that means that we should have just gotten back 24K of uh, of given us a total of 30k or 32k um, let's see so high scores that's the page there uh, credits options and new All right that looks good and we've got the, uh, the uh, well that one in the armory so everything looks pretty cool. So awesome. Now let's see what I can do about getting rid of those uh, pesky things. Actually, let me uh, commit this. This is a good build. 
good test. Of course, I'll test the other ones later on. But I have to play through the you know full stage in order that they takes about five minutes to do. Um, so let's let's do this and get rid of that. And let's do this. And actually, don't need to do anything special because we're going to fill those in later on. All right, so what is that's uh, don't need that. Um, don't need that either. So let's go back in over here to memory map, texture start, but that should do it. Yep. Now let's do this. Oh, that seems to be the only place I'm using it. Awesome. And then textures.reg, I want to change that. And that seems to be the only place that I'm using that because, of course, I did, have not updated the uh, scene state yet, which I should probably do. Okay, so package loader is updated to support the original default behavior and being able to load from that. I've got a small little function in here to support loading of that stuff, so I'm not not that difficult uh, of a deal there. It ended up being actually, I'll tell you what, a lot less of problematic than I thought it would be. So I shouldn't have put this off for so long. Uh, sorry, we've got all this uh, in there. We don't need to really specify any seat in the uh, MMUs, and we can load in all of our data there. So let's. Uh, I guess let's do a little bit of cleanup and I'll figure out if I can't do anything else and I'll cut it off or uh, be done for the day. That'll give me some free time to do some other stuff. All right, so. And we've got. Uh, all right. So, where was that we needed to fix up? We need to fix up the. Um, Scene state. This right up in here. All right. So go back over here to our MMU, or our memory map. Okay, F4. And this is plus one. Just like going to a wedding. Let's see, these come from somewhere else. And we're already using that elsewhere. Okay, well, let's see. Where is... Do I have something for decompression here? Nope, I got my loader stuff here. I've got... Uh... No, that's it. So let's... Uh... In fact, let's... I guess I should probably test that a little bit. Just to make sure it still works. Yeah, I hate... I hate these the lack of symbolics. I like to be able to know what I'm you know, just read it like prose. I mean I know what it is, but hard coding that stuff is a terrible idea because it could change at any point in time. Then you gotta figure out which one of these that you're using actually matters that you need to change it. So alright, let's just do one last test because I wanna I just like the fade. I really I really, really like the fade. Especially for that title, just because of that background screen, the way it is, it just comes in like at you. So high scores. Okay, we're good there. All right, and I want to update the uh, the memory map. So in fact, let me uh, let me see how big those actually are. Okay, I am using background three, I believe. Let me uh, let me check which one I'm using. Background three, yep, that's it. So, get background one and two out of the mix, and that is a total of uh, twenty-two, yeah, twenty-one, yeah, twenty-two point one k. 
It's 22,646 bytes. So I've actually got a couple of K left in there. So if I could find a, a, a few more smaller, really, <laughs> some more of those images that compress from 28K to, to 200 and some odd bytes, then I could fit, you know, a few of those in there. And, and uh, um, hell, maybe even do some, some palette animation with it. But I mean, I don't think I could find anything worth it. But uh, um, so that also leaves a lot open for, uh, for the future because I probably will allocate one more block for it. So we're going to we're going to go in here and we're going to mark this textures. And uh, I guess we'll do uh, block one. It's kind of a, this doesn't have a size, but I do want to have the, the total size on there. Just, uh, just for shits and giggles right now. And I'm not going to break this in or uh, slide this down into a single uh, thing. I'll do that later because these will move, certainly. Um, all three so we'll get rid of this and rid of that we're just going to go here two and three just to kind of give it uh, something and we're going to take this reserved oops and right there so i guess i could probably move those textures down a little bit you know, in fact i think i i think i will um Let's see. Oops. And reserve. So we're going to go to textures. Textures one. Oops. So, yep. So now we have these four blocks right there. And, uh, some other stuff will, will get consolidated. Now the thing is, is about all of this, except all of all of the rest of the consolidation that can be done here, except for the stuff that I mentioned with the screen, um, is uh, is really actually some of the most boring, tedious stuff because it's really just changing data tables. I mean that that's the biggest thing. It's moving around from from one bank. I've got a bunch of uh, uh, files that I include right here, you know, the bank and then the profiles, and you know this has the actual inclusion of the uh, um, of the sprite, uh, the compiled sprite itself, and then the profile um, has an image definition for it, you know, for even, odd, and all of that stuff. And some of this will change when I go, uh, depending on how much I switch from the, uh, from going even, odd to just even. Um, so some of this data might disappear, um, actually. And I'd like to get something to, to generate the tables without having to manually do it, but that ain't gonna happen. This this go around. I'll make it for, make make it happen for the next game, but. Definitely not going to happen for uh, for this one. Um, so okay, I got that. Well, see now I've got 32k left uh, left for sound at the moment, and some uh, some other stuff that uh, that is on the way. So hopefully, if I can get around 64k um, free, then I think I've I, I, I got a good shot at, at doing some of the audio, and that's going to be the. I mean, I, I think after this, uh, uh, you know, because I'm not going to have a lot of time to do. Um, a lot of programming, if any, over the next uh, few weeks. Um, so I don't know, even know when I'm going to be able to get a video. That's why I've, I've been kind of going, you know, hog wild. I've got a lot of, uh, um, I've been able to find some free time that I can actually devote to it. And I want to get some of these changes in before that that big, you know, uh, that big break there. So that's going to be a, a pain in the ass. Hopefully I'll be able to get one or two in there, um, you know, along the way. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so some of this will get uh, consolidated uh, down quite a bit. And I, but yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna have to do it by hand, and that, all it is is moving shit around. That's it. That's all really is. Oh, it's like okay, this one is you know x number of bytes, and, and the, the the size is is, is included in the uh, the assembler file uh, for that sprite. So I can figure out you know a good place to put it, and then you know the the stuff up here is certainly gonna do it. But this this screen might might go away, might not, might keep it. Um, it it's it's really gonna depend. But if if I do, I mean these uh. These screens. I mean, if, if I don't do the vertical scrolling, and I do a black background with um, excuse me, these things are good with a uh, uh, with a, a star field that's you know animated through code and all of that. Then it will cut that down significantly. I mean, I'll gain uh, what uh, three blocks back or three MMU blocks back for every screen for the first two screens and then 
screen three would just go away completely, which is eight. Um, so I mean, now you're talking, you know, 128k area, so of, of you know available memory. So I've got options. I've got options. It just depends on what I'm willing to, uh, which which path I'm going to take on that one. <laughs> but this other stuff can be uh, can be done. Let me. And the audio actually has some requirements of its own that have to be met. So, like two of these blocks, two of these, these two, two of these MMB blocks are going to be dedicated to the uh, to the mixer because stuff is uh, code is unrolled quite a bit and it's got a lot of support. I don't think I uh, I, I don't think the uh, I, I have much of the um, uh, audio stuff kind of queued up because that's actually in a separate project. But uh, maybe I can because there's the way that, that chaos works is it, it has multiple contexts and it takes advantage of the um, the gimme's task register uh, to uh, to facilitate um, or to support two of those um, those contexts. Uh, the first context is you know the one that you see all the time and that is the um, uh, you know the game playing the the, um, the menu or the uh, you know the title screen and all that. Um, and the second is playing audio. And the reason for this, and that I have to use these tasks, or, or prefer to use these tasks in this particular case, is with the way that things are set up, particularly in supporting, um, you know, the vertical scrolling and a back buffer for uh, performance enhancements. There's just not enough memory blocks to map in even a single waveform. So there would be a lot of, um, there'd have to be a lot of shifts in a couple of areas. Um, and that would actually outright require, um, you know, pretty much going to a, a, a black um, background or dropping the the, the um, uh, that back buffer, which is going to have a significant impact on on uh, performance, much much more significant than than using the a, a dual task model works. Um, so in these, uh, you know, here you've got you know various contexts for when you're in you know the, the application, like you know. Uh, Handling the you know like the game logic, rendering text, uh, rendering you know the sprites and stuff like that. So there's a separation there that w with some expectations about what you know what is where in memory and when it's going to be there. Um, but with sound, you have to update you know well depending on what your playback rate is, anywhere from what three and a half kilohertz up to you know 15 um, uh, kilohertz. So that is a um, and that's a significant hit on the CPU. Um, and then you have the, you know, depending on how many channels you want. I mean, first I'd like to be able to support three channels, um, simply for the fact that, like, on a two meg machine or even a 6309 um, plus two megs, um, you could load in a few extra samples and maybe do uh, some actual digital uh, background music with all of that mixed in. Um, if you uh, like, like, um, uh, pre-sample all the instruments for like the different notes that you need, you can actually, uh, you know, get a small collection of those um, going for for a lot of tunes and and uh, get some pretty impressive music. Um, it's too much of a hit though for um, to do that during the uh, the gameplay. You can get two voices, um, but you get those at a very low uh, rate, and that actually comes in. Let me find the the, uh, the tasks, um, the task map here. That is, uh, I've got another memory map in chaos. Um, so actually, that's going to be here. Yeah, see these two right here kind of describe, you know, each one. Whereas in th this, um, this is uh, kind of backwards. This is actually wrong. This is context based. I don't know why those are there, but oh, I was looking at at the something a couple of days ago. That's why. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the the first task is um, is zero, and that is the application. You're doing all that logic and stuff. Um, now within that, the first 48k are dedicated to the application. It, can, it really has full control over that. Um, although when you start running certain chaos code, it switches some stuff over and then switches back after it's done. It's very minimal context uh, or overhead for the context switches in, in, in that in order to support. Um, you know, a lot of that stuff. But then there's there's 16K, which is split up into two 8K blocks. You've got shared data, which is shared between the application and the chaos runtime. And then you have um, the chaos runtime itself, which which actually includes, includes the DAC driver, uh, which is really simple. And, and there's a reason for that. And then the mixer task manager, which helps switch back between it, which is, is driven by, by the uh, IRQ. Um, but for actually mixing the sound, 
um, we switch over to task one, and that's handled you know, in an IRQ, actually, um, where everything is mapped in, all the waves, all the wave table, and then it goes through and it mixes it into a data buffer that is in um, this region right here, which is you know, shared between the two um, for the DAC driver. So and actually, let me find that because that's that's really simple. Because and, and there, I, I just don't have enough memory to map, um, you know, two WAV files in, let alone you know some of the uh, the, the mixer code, uh, particularly for how often that you know that kind of stuff happens. So it, and, and doing it in a, in the task is is uh, um, pretty comparable. And if you're not familiar with what a task is, the the GIMI has um, two sets of um, MMU registers. The first set um, is for task zero and the first is for task one. So you can switch between the two and it swaps what uh, what MMU uh, uh, blocks are, are mapped into the 64K address space. So you can really switch stuff a lot of times and it's, it's persistent. So you can make changes to, to one of them um, and you know it's gonna stick the next time you switch over to that, uh, that context. So it's really, really uh, useful for something like this. Um, so let me find that interrupt because that's in the interrupt stuff. Um, uh, let me see here. Let me switch over to, because this is, yeah, this is a separate project that um, is being done in a sandbox of interrupts. All right. So the timings and stuff, uh, I've actually got metrics and cycles and stuff there for how much the, uh, you know, the, the, the audio is, is going to take. And I've, I've done that at 7.68 kilohertz. Now there are lower, um, uh, Playback rates that I can use um, that are uh, that certainly um, are, uh, are uh, enough, I guess. Um, they're suitable, um, and they do save some CPU. I'm just not sure I want to go down that. So I've I've kind of measured everything and I've been kind of planning everything around 7.68 kilohertz, which is a really really good rate. And the reason for that is is that the uh, the the Coco's refresh, um, you know, on the, on the video is is 15.36 uh, kilohertz. Um, so it's basically 256 scan lines per frame update at 60 frames per second. So in that, uh, uh, so every update, if you're doing a, a or every uh, um, refresh, horizontal refresh, um, you know, at 60 frames per second, you're playing 256 bytes of audio. So you know, you cut that in half, and that kind of fits well within the number of of uh, of um, times that you're going to get, uh, or it coincides and can be synced with that horizontal um, refresh so that you've got things going on. So um, and this particular driver, all this does is it loads a byte from a ring buffer and then sends it to the DAC. That's it. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't check to see at the end. Um, and it uses you know some self-modifying code to do that. It, it modifies the, uh, the pointer. Um, and uh, when it gets to the end of the buffer, it just goes back to the very beginning of the buffer and starts playing again. That's all it does. So, and this is a, a very um, time <laughs> time consuming uh, task. And at 7.68 kilohertz, it comes out at 19.75% of the CPU, which is a lot. Um, and that's just to, to play audio that's not mixed from anything. I mean, that, and certainly you could, um, you can, um, uh, multiplex all of that mixing and the playing of the sound um, within this uh, this interrupt driver. This is driven off of the the, the FIRQ. Um, as long as you can map all of that, you know th those waveforms in and keep them mapped into memory without having to switch back and forth, you can you can get a little bit better performance. But since I don't have that option, I actually have to do my mixing offline. I have to do it somewhere else, and that's where that that task register comes in um, in, in the gimme. So this all this does is, is sit there and it plays out the uh, you know plays from that that buffer out of the DAC. Now at 7.6 kilohertz, since I'm running at half of this rate of, of the full you know uh, uh, refresh of, of the cocoa, or at least you know that that full you know cycle count. Um, at least within the, the I, I like to, to keep synced with the video because it, it makes things a lot easier to see why. So each time I, each frame, each frame update of that 60 frames per second, I only have to update and mix 128 bytes. So and if I sync it all up right and time it right, I don't have to make any checks in here to say, hey, have we exceeded this buffer? Go fill it. I can just automatically go ahead and fill it every single time that, that there's an update on that that horizontal refresh, um, so it removes you know a, a branch from here, um, 
and if you're mixing two, I mean, it would be a couple of different branches and, and all of that. So you, you do save a little bit um, here, which compensates for you know, having to move over that task because it is just a little bit slower. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, there are some wicked optimizations that you can do. Um, and that's why this particular um, FIRQ handler is labeled no DP. Um, and this one does not run within the direct page. So this this particular one would be is uh, built to say, hey, I'm not in the direct page, so I can't use some, some fancy options. Whereas normally, it's actually going to be running in the direct page. So there's going to be another variation of that function. And the reason for that is, is that the way that the mixer works is that you know it switches over to um, to that task one. And it says, hey, I have to mix these channels. So it takes over the direct page register and it says, hey, I'm going to point this to the buffer that I'm going to be mixing into, which, uh, let's see, not that one, this one, which is actually defined down here. You have that audio DAC buffer, 256 bytes right here. So it's going to mix right in there. So it's going to take that direct uh, that direct page register and it's going to point it to that. So now since you're mixing uh, values, the, the, the most that you can load and store at once um, and do the mix is uh, is uh, 16 bits, so two bytes. Um, so you're going to do that 64 times. So you're, you're getting that. You end up saving, I think it's like 42 or 43 cycles with when, once you take into account um, switching out the direct page and the, uh, and the, the function to jump to. Um, and moving some of that data back and, and forth, um, you still end up being being faster. Now on the faster um, uh, playback rates, where you're actually filling up like 256 bytes and doing it 128 times, you're still using the same amount of, of cycles to, to capture back and forth, but you're saving more cycles on that uh, on that mix. Um, so now there's there's some things and, and there are situations where it doesn't take over that direct page, um, but that's situational. So and the thing is, is that when you do that, you're not loading and saving out the state each time you do an iteration. Now, that can certainly be, do, be done efficiently, but by doing it offline, unless you need to really do some fancy, you're just playing, you know, playing back digital audio, you can take full use of all of the registers, all of the index registers to load. Um, so you load off of you, you know, a known index off of the X register and then you store it. Um, to uh, something in the direct page, and, and you get uh, you can get a fair amount of uh, uh, of performance um, out of that. Um, but uh, but you know some of that is still being uh, put together, and I've got to be able to, to fit sound um, into everything. So that's that's why I've been you know started uh, consolidating with this. But the, the sound is is going to be the next big thing that that I tackle. I mean I do some videos on some other minor stuff like I did this one, but uh, but overall I'm going to be really focusing on the next because that's that's the one thing that is is really missing um, I mean I could certainly go with the whole thing of you know there's um, there's no sound in space <laughs> so uh, but you know that doesn't fly and then uh, you know I, I've been thinking about um, how to utilize that that palette um, uh, sequencer and, and maybe I should that I did uh, in the last one which has actually now been moved into uh, um, into uh, staging for uh, for chaos uh, ads. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I trimmed it down pretty good. I you know, consolidated the uh, the fade in, fade out, um, and and all of that into a single start sequence, which is controlled by the um, uh, by the player, and then moved all of the data into uh, into here. So the sequences are right here. So now these these right here, I, I I'm going to change out uh, or add some additional tables like this um, to turn everything red. And then I'm going to have it fade um, and, and uh, or, or play that um, uh, that sequence um, when you do a, a smartphone. That's going to do everything like except for the, the background. Um, everything except for the, the, the black background will be uh, will be some shade of, of red or, or probably a little bit of magenta. I'm, I've got to play around with the colors and then kind of have it cycle, you know, a little bit um, so that, uh, you know, you've got that that minor little effect. Um, uh, of, of actually you know blowing everything up or at least hitting everything you know at once regardless of what uh, um, you know sprite they, uh, they they show for it um, so but we'll, we'll see how that goes but that's that those are like little minor things little, little minor details that it's like hey I want to do that today and I throw something like that in there um, so I don't think I've really got anything else um, tonight I've got some other stuff to, uh, to take care of so um, I think this is where I'm just like gonna sign off and, and maybe uh, you know 
go relax a little bit and go do some other stuff. But I, I, I think that this is going to be the last uh, uh, stuff I do for the Coco uh, for for a little bit. Um, I don't know. Who knows? A couple of weeks, I might actually be able to get uh, get some time to uh, uh, take on a, a couple of minor things and, and do another video. But I'm not actually expecting one for for a while. Um, just going to be way too busy and. You know, of course, I've gone hog wild with this stuff recently anyway. So, um, but anyway, that's, uh, uh, I'm babbling on now. And uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to head on out. Y'all have a, a, a great, uh, great rest.